All right, in this video, I want to add a search functionality to our website. So let's start by adding an input field above our table. I'm going to open our home.view and right above the table, I'm going to create a div with some classes, flex, justify end, and margin bottom four. Then within that, I will have another div and set the width to one fourth. Then within this div, I will have an input field of type search. So we don't need name and ID, but I'm going to add a placeholder that just says search. And if we take a look at it, we have our input field up here and I am using a search input field so that I get this cross next to it that would clear the input field. All right, so the first step is to get the data out of this field and we can do that using vModel. So I'm going to use the vModel directive and a variable that I want to call it search. Then up here, I wanna define that search variable set it to ref from view so we need to import it and set the initial value to an empty string so now we need to decide either we want to add a button and then invoke a function on button click or we can just watch this input field and perform certain actions so i'm going to use the watch method from view and it is imported up here and then say watch our search input field so that is the first argument and then perform some actions so I'm going to pass a callback function here and just say console.log.search value. All right, so let's see if this works. So I'm going to open console here and start typing in our search input. We get the result in the console. But instead of passing search value in here, we can accept the parameter here. I'm going to call it Q and then pass it down to our console.log. That would do the same thing. So back to our website, if I type, we see the same thing. But now we want to make get requests to the same page and include this search term in the URL. In order to do that, we can use inertia router. We can either use the visit method that would take the URL and then the options, or we could use one of these shorthands. For example, if we are making a get request, we can just use the get method that would take the URL, the data that we want to send to the request and the options that we might have. So let's use this first one. So instead of console.log, I'm going to say router that needs to be imported from inertia, then use the get method, make a request to the the same page so forward slash and then include that query in the data so i want to have a search key and the value of it should be that query or search term so let's see how this works now back to our website if i type something here you notice we get a search parameter that is equal to f that's the key i pressed but we lost the focus of our search input field if i type again we get the same result because as soon as i type here we are making that request so we are losing focus in fact, if we check our network tab, you notice I made three requests and each request was on a key press. So we don't want this. We want to keep the focus or preserve the state of this search input field. In order to do that, we can pass a third argument, which is the options, and we want to set the preserve state to true. So now back to our website, if I give it a refresh and start typing here, you notice I am not losing the state of my search input field. And as I type here, I am adding that query to the URL. But we have a big problem here, and that is making a request on each keystroke. So we don't want to do this, and we want to avoid this using a throttle or a debounce. And for that, we are going to use a JS library called Lodash. So this library has two functions that are very useful for us. One is throttle, and one is debounce. And let's install it first and see how they work. So I'm going to use this command npm install and paste it in our terminal. When that is done, I'm going to go back to the project, and instead of passing a callback function here, I'm going to use a throttle function from Lodash. So I'm going to cut this and say throttle, which needs to be imported from Lodash. And then as the first argument in this function, I'm going to paste our callback function. And I'm also going to put these on different lines so we can see easier. Now, as a second argument, this throttle function takes a number that is the delay in milliseconds. For example, I want to say delay this action by a second. So let's see how this works. I'm going to go back to the website and give it a refresh. Notice we have no requests. And as I type here, you notice we are not making as many requests as before. In fact, this is only happening every second. And that is because of this throttle function. Basically, we are invoking this request function with one second delay. Now, similar to throttle, we also have debounce. So if I change this to debounce and again, needs to be imported from Lodash and then test this out again. You notice as I type here, nothing happens, but as soon as I stop, 
we get one request after one second. That's the delay we specified here. So the difference between debounce and throttle is that debounce invoke our function once after the delay we specify, but throttle would invoke our function on an interval that we specify with this number. So for example, every one second or every two seconds. So you can choose which of these methods suits you best. But I'm going to stick with debounce because I think debounce does a better job. And I'm going to reduce this number to 500 milliseconds. That means while I'm typing here, nothing's gonna happen. But as soon as I stop, after half a second, we get our request. So that's exactly what I want. So again, we are watching our search input field and we are saying, make a get request to the same page with the search parameter after we are done typing with a 500 millisecond delay. And I'm just gonna delete this throttle import. We don't need it anymore. So that's the first step. We have our search field and we are able to send the search term to the URL so we can now grab it using the request object in our Laravel app. So let's go to our web.php and this is where we have our homepage. So the first thing I wanna do here is to change this to a get method so we have more space so we can add more code here. So I'm gonna change this inertia to get, then cut this part of the code and add function. Then inside these curly brackets, I'm gonna say return inertia and then paste that line of code. So we are returning a home view, and this is the data we are sending to the view. But now instead of sending down all the users, we want to check if our request object has a search key. And if that's true, then filter this user collection based on the name of the users. The first step is to check if we have a search field. And I'm going to accept the request here since we are going to work with it and delete this paginate. So I wanna say, grab the users and check using this when method. This method is similar to an if statement. The first argument is the condition. So I wanna say if request search is true, then pass a closure here and filter my user array. So in this closure function, we can accept a parameter and I'm going to call it query that would represent our collection. So in this case, users. So I want to say, if this is true, then filter our users based on another condition. So I can use a where method and say, where name is like our request search term. So this where method is like an SQL statement. We want to fetch the records from our database based on a condition. So the first argument is the name of our column. So we want to filter it based on the name. The second one is the criteria. In this case, we want to check if search is like our name, not exactly the same. And I also want to say this search term could be anywhere within the string name. So it doesn't have to start with the search term or end. So we can concatenate percentage signs before and after this search term. So a percentage sign, then a dot, and then the same thing at the end, dot, and then percentage sign. So if we have a search parameter, our user collection would be filtered using this where statement, and then we want to paginate it. So let's say paginate and maybe five each page. So let's end this statement so we get rid of that error. And we have one more problem here, and that is the request object, which is not available in this closure function. So we already know how to fix this. We can just say use the request that is available up here. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna go back to our website. And right now we have a search term that is just nonsense and we don't have a user with that name. So if I delete that, we get our 30 results. Let's search for M and we get three pages. That is 13 results. Let's say MO, we get one only. So we have one user that has the string MO in their name. And if we delete this, we get all the results. Now we have few problems here. Let's search for that letter M again. We get three pages and we get our search parameter up here. But if we go to page two, we lost that search term and we are back to 30 results. So our search is gone. This can be easily fixed by chaining another method to this paginate method. And that is with query string. And as the name suggests, this would keep the query string in the URL so we don't lose our queries. Now let's go back to our website and start over. So if I search for M again, we get three pages, but now if I go to page two, you notice we get page two and search is M. So we don't lose our search result. But now we have another problem. So you notice I am on page two and we have a search term, but in our search field, we don't have anything. So if I type another M here, you see, we get a weird result. Our pagination is completely broken and we don't have a page parameter 
in our URL. So we can solve this problem by populating our search field with the URL parameter. So if there is a search parameter in the URL and it has a value, we want that value in this search input field. So we don't get this weird behavior. And in order to fix that, we can send this request search as a prop to our view. So let's create a prop for it. I'm going to call it search term and the value of this should be request search. So now in our home view, I can accept search term as a prop and the type of it is a string. Then down here as the initial value, we want to accept this search term. So in order to access these props inside the script, we can save our defined props return inside this variable. So down here, I can say props, then search term. Now back to our website, I'm going to start over and search for M, we get 13 results. But now if I go to page two, you notice we still have that M in the input field. So that means if I type another M, we get no results. So that works. If I say MR, we get three users that have MR in their names. And if I delete it, we are back to 30 results. And you notice as I type here, we don't get the results right away. It happens after 500 milliseconds and that's because of this debounce we applied. So this is how we can have search feature on our website. And you can apply this to any model and any column. For example, let's say you want to search in the name column as well as the email. So let's go back to our web.php and I want to add another where statement to this query. So I'm gonna put this on different lines so it looks better and I'm going to chain another method and that is or where so we are just adding another criteria and this would take the same arguments so i can copy and paste them here and just change the column name so i'm saying look inside my users table and check if the name or the email of a user matches our search term so let's test this out back to our website i'm going to start over and i'm going to search for maria as an email so let's say maria we get two results we have one user that has maria in their email and then we have another that has maria in their name so we are looking in both columns so that's about adding search feature and ideally we want to move this into a controller because it's getting out of hand but i will do it in the next video where we talk about authorization using inertia thanks for watching see you at the next one